KY3 News at 10 starts with breaking news. A dangerous drive tonight crashes and slide offs as more freezing weather covers the Ozark. Well, Lisa, we're watching uh, freezing rain and sleet continue to move across the area. The weather's only going to get worse as the night goes along. First, breaking news in Christian County, though. Three people found dead in a mobile home. That's 11 deaths in the area in just a week and a half. Those deaths were at a home right here on uh, North Fremont here, uh, just by Fremont Hills, which is in this area, and it is uh, south of CC, which is here. So it would be right in this area here uh, between Ozark and Nixa. KY3's Mike Landis is at the scene tonight with breaking news. Deputies have been going in and out of that trailer all night, bringing out pieces of evidence, trying to figure out exactly what happened here. This here behind me is the trailer in Fremont Hills where a man came tonight to either visit or check on these people. And that is where they found uh, the bodies of three people. We're told it's two females and one male, ages 40, 26, and 27. The sheriff not releasing any identities whatsoever on this, but he will confirm uh, that it appears that a firearm was involved in these deaths here. So once again, the sheriff not releasing a lot of details, but uh, they are confirming, though, uh, that at this trailer, uh, they did find the bodies of three people, two females and one male as well. The sheriff says there may be uh, more details tomorrow, but as of tonight, they're simply continuing the investigation, and there could be more things they reveal for us uh, tomorrow about this in Fremont Hills. Of course, a very horrible thing to have to count, but this discovery tonight makes the 11th body found at homicide scenes in and around Springfield since last week. We're live in Fremont Hills tonight. I'm Mike Landis, KY3 News. And returning now to our other top story, everything from sleet to freezing rain. Several people even say they've had thunder and lightning tonight. Chief Meteorologist Ron Hurst is in our Storm Team Center. Ron? Yeah, that thunder and lightning is not a good thing, Lisa, because that means, you know, you're getting this convective element in here and it causes it to rain really hard. And while that might not stick to the trees or power lines because of the rate it's coming down, it sticks to the ground and the roads are just a mess across the Ozarks tonight. I mean, it is a virtual skating rink in this part of our viewing area, and I really urge people, if you don't have to go anywhere, just stay off the roads and stay home tonight. But you can see the wide area of freezing rain and sleet across southwest Missouri. We do have some rain out there from Joplin uh, down towards, uh, say, McDonald County, and then in sections of northern Arkansas, there's a little bit of rain. Uh, the uh, moisture has been developing in this part of the area and then kind of riding onto the northeast, and we can see that in our time lapse. So that's not a good thing. We're going to have to break that down. If that continues for much of the night, then the ice is really going to accumulate. Now, the next thing is, is this whole area in here is below freezing. And short-term models show the temperature is probably not going to warm up above 32. So any additional moisture is just going to cause the situation to get downhill very quickly. So we're going to watch that. And, of course, we'll be extending those uh, winter storm warnings westward as necessary. Ethan? And treacherous in many spots around the Ozarks. This is the Missouri road condition map, and you can see right here the exclamation points. Traffic has actually been shut down. Interstate 44 at a standstill uh, right here in a couple of spots at the 149 mile marker in Pulaski County, and then again at the 132 mile marker in Laclede County. And it's not just there that we're having problems. Crashes being reported all across the Ozarks. KY3's Eric Hilt is on the road tonight. Hey, Ethan, we're on a parking lot that's overlooking Interstate 44 here. And to give you an idea just how slick these conditions are, we're in this parking lot, and we are standing literally on a sheet of ice. I mean, we cannot get any traction here. We literally slid into the parking lot, and these roads aren't in any better shape. We were slipping and sliding all the way as we were driving, and as that rain continues to fall down, it keeps getting even slicker. We saw several slide-offs, almost too many to count. Out to, and many people who were even just pulled over on the side of the road because those conditions got so bad. We even saw one slide off that uh, near uh, the intersection of Highway 65 and Interstate 44 where the car was flipped on its roof and emergency crews were there to help out that driver. And that really seems like the problem spot around Springfield is that northeastern area. We saw a lot of cars slide off the road in accidents, a lot of rear-ending because people uh, weren't able to stop when the person in front of them uh, stopped just because these roads are so icy. Uh, you heard Ron describe it as a skating rink. That really describes it perfectly. I mean, it is so hard to get traction out on these roads.
roads right now. So if you are at home, uh, I'd advise you stay at home. There's no need to get out on these roads. Uh, it's very dangerous. It's very slick, and it's very hard to drive out there. If you do need to get out on these roads, again, we can't stress it enough. Drive slowly. Give yourself plenty of time and give plenty of room in front uh, to the driver in front of you because these conditions out here on the roads are incredibly dangerous and you don't want to be one of those cars that has slid off or has been in an accident. Reporting live in Springfield, Eric Hilt, KY3 News. And of course you can stay ahead of the weather right there, KY3.com. Get the hour by hour forecast where you live, current road conditions, check out traffic cameras and on the go up to the minute information anytime at uh, your KY3 News and Weather smartphone and tablet apps. It's been a cold and very dark night in Republic for some people. Power knocked out just after 8 o'clock this evening. Lights in houses and businesses went out. Street lights went dark. Empire Electric says more than 5,300 customers were out because of a problem with an incoming electrical feed. Boy, that's bad timing, isn't it? Power started to come back on in some spots already, but could be a while before it is completely restored. A woman known as a grandmother to scores of children at her daycare has been identified as one of the three people found dead in a burned-out Springfield home yesterday. Police say 68-year-old Victoria Taylor appears to have died from a gunshot. Her 46-year-old son, James Taylor, found dead in a chair from a self-inflicted gunshot wound and a pistol in his lap. His 36-year-old wife, Jennifer, also found dead in the house there on North Roosevelt. An autopsy will determine how she died. Firefighters also found matches and cans of gasoline in the house as well. The man wanted in a brutal double murder in Springfield one week ago, now in the Greene County Jail. Earlier this week, Willie Clark Jr. was arrested by U.S. Marshals in Arkansas. Police believe he shot his ex-girlfriend and her sons after an argument inside the house at Newton and Madison. One of the sons survived and was able to get to a neighbor's house for help. 50-year-old Andrea Anderson and her 35-year-old son Kevin Anderson were killed. Clark faces two first-degree murder charges along with charges of armed criminal action and first-degree assault. We've been following a big fire in one of the tallest apartment buildings on the planet. Broken glass, twisted metal seen falling from the building known as the Torch Tower in Dubai. Fire started this evening on two separate floors far apart from each other of that skyscraper. Right now, no reports of any injuries or deaths. Other neighboring buildings were evacuated as a precaution as well. No word yet on how the fire started, but we're told it is now out. People around the Springfield area continue their outpouring of support for Springfield police officers shot in the line of duty. KY3's Drew Douglas visited a couple of benefits tonight, raising money for Officer Aaron Pearson. 100% of ticket sales at Friday night's Springfield Express hockey game are going to Officer Aaron Pearson. I know that Aaron would be so incredibly grateful and happy with the turnout here and all of the people who have come out to support him. His sister-in-law drops the puck to start the game as folks in the stands root for the officer shot in the line of duty on January 26th. It's been incredible and please keep praying and, and sending positive thoughts. The law enforcement community also held a trivia night fundraiser for Pearson who continues to recover in a brain injury rehab center in Atlanta. I mean, I don't know how many people we've had here, but it's way more than we would have expected, and it just, it's really nice to see that. It's awesome seeing the community respond like this. I mean, there's fundraisers all over town for them, and they need the help. It's, it's a long, long recovery. Some of the other officers who went through the police academy with Pearson miss their buddy. Whenever he gets back, we're here for him, and he's always going to be our brother, and no matter what, that'll never change, and we'll be seeing you soon. Three of Pearson's closest friends friends on the force will soon fly out to Atlanta to visit him. We're probably just as excited, if not more excited, to see him than he probably is to see us. But we're coming down, so can't wait. Drew Douglas, KY3 News. And of course, we continue to follow two big stories right here. Uh, three people found dead inside a home near Fremont Hills. We'll have a live a breaking story from the scene next. Then a live look at the streets again. Slick and getting slicker. We're also going to get an update on uh, conditions coming tomorrow. You're watching KY3 News at 10 with Lisa Rose, Ethan Foreheads, Storm Team Meteorologist Ron Hurst, and Sports with Chad Blind, the Ozarks' number one newscast. We're still following that breaking news out of Christian County. Three people dead in a home near Fremont Hills. KY3's Mike Landis is at the scene with the latest.
Yeah, the sheriff telling us he believes these homicides took place sometime earlier today, but it wasn't until this evening uh, that a man came to this trailer here behind me to do a checkup on these three people inside. When he went in there, uh, they found three bodies. They were two females and one male. At this point, the deputies are not releasing the names of these people uh, because this thing is still under investigation. Uh, the sheriff, Joey Kyle, will tell us that uh, it's apparent that a gun uh, was used uh, in these homicides, but really uh, not saying much more than that. Of course, they've been out here uh, all evening bringing evidence out of that trailer. Uh, also, after taking pictures, braving the weather, trying to find out exactly what happened out here. But as of now, nobody in custody with this, but simply trying to find out exactly uh, how uh, these three people were murdered here in Fremont Hills. We are live tonight. I'm Michael Andis, KY3 News. And of course, the other big story is the weather and its dangerous impact on driving tonight. KY3's Eric Kilt is live in Webster County with the latest on that. Eric? Even, Elisa, it is incredibly dangerous out here. We're on a parking lot overlooking Interstate 44, but we've been driving around for the last two hours or so, and we've seen an incredible number of slide-offs, really, and other accidents just driving Interstate 44 and around northern Springfield. We talked to the Missouri State Highway Patrol and asked them just how many accidents have there been in southwest Missouri because of these icy roads, and they said they couldn't give us a number just because there's been so many and that their workers were constantly being called out to slide-offs and other accidents. So if you are on these roads tonight, you do need to get on these roads. Make sure you're being extremely cautious. It is an ice rink out there. A lot of these roads are just coated with a layer of ice. So make sure you're driving slowly and giving those other drivers around you plenty of room because it is extremely hard to stop out here and very easy to lose control of your car. Reporting live in Springfield, Eric Hilt, KY3 News. Thanks, Eric. This weekend starts a mix of weathers. Who's most likely to see the ice and where it could turn to rain? Then how much warmer it will actually get uh, and when. It's supposed to happen sometime tomorrow. Ron's going to give us all the details on that on this ever-changing weekend forecast. Stick around. And now, your KY3 Storm Team forecast. Well, good evening, everyone. It's a busy night here in the Ozarks. We have, still have a very wide swath of freezing rain and freezing drizzle over most of the Ozarks at this hour. By the way, you notice some rain starting to show up or be depicted by the radar over here south of Fort Wood in Texas County. Don't you believe it. Temperatures over there are still in the mid-20s, and so all of this is in the form of freezing rain and sleet. Now, out here, it is also depicting it as a bit of rain. Temperatures are right at the 32-degree mark, and the uh, sheriff's deputies over here and the emergency managers are reporting extremely slick and hazardous conditions on I-49, also on the Kansas side of the line, too. And the moisture continues to build down to our southwest and move across the Ozarks. Right now, it's moving on to the east-northeast at about 30 to 35 miles an hour, and you can see how we are developing it here, moving to the northeast. Now, hopefully, we'll be able to shut down the conveyor belt here this evening at some point, because otherwise, it's going to get pretty nasty out there. In fact, it's already really bad in the east side of our viewing area. They've had thunder, they've had lightning, they've had hail, they've had very heavy sleet in this part of our viewing area. They've had tons of freezing rain. The roads are in horrible conditions, as we've been telling you. So if you don't have to go anywhere, just stay home tonight. Now, it's a little more patchy in nature as you head south from uh, southern Missouri down into northern Arkansas, but still, we're seeing some uh, ice develop on trees and power lines. It's not a huge amount. We talked with North Arkansas Electric out of Mountain Home, and they say there's just a wee bit of ice. Everything's good with the power grid, at least for now, but we're going to continue to watch it. As far as Springfield goes, you can see a large area of town really covered by that freezing rain and freezing drizzle, and the roads are in horrible shape around here as well, including uh, those side streets. I mean, the main roads aren't too bad because they've been treated lately with a lot of salt, but I tell you, it, the side streets, the parking lots, your driveway is just horrible. This is what Lebanon looks like right now. Not a lot of traffic out on the roads. You can see how the light's glaring off of the ice down there. So, again, be very careful and watch your step. Again, it's going to be this part of our viewing area tonight that we're going to watch for a third to more than half an inch of ice accumulation. Once you get around to a half inch, that's when we're going to start to see some power outages. And there may be some sporadic power outages occurring now, or they may occur later on tonight. So, you know, with the temperatures being so cold over there, that's where I think the worst of the problems is going to be. Here's the latest readings, 27 in Rolla, 28 in Salem, 26 in Mountain Grove, so you can see all that moisture is freezing here in town. Officially at the airport, 30. We're at 29 degrees uh, downtown, and even Joplin right now is at 32, so really we have problems all across the area, and future cast shows that this moisture is just going to continue uh, to develop uh, through the night and may actually get kind of heavy down here along the Missouri-Arkansas line. Now, it does look like these areas may eventually get to 32 degrees. If not, look at the intensity of this rain. That 
That could be horrible down there early tomorrow morning. If it does change to rain, you have another problem in that you're going to melt off the snow with the rain and cause a localized flooding situation. So again, we've got problems there. Uh, good news is this thing starts to come to an end early on Saturday. By Saturday afternoon, that is finally out of here, and that's when temperatures will finally warm up. All right, the uh, advisory is now being expanded west towards the Kansas line. The warning has also been expanded west from Marshfield down to Gainesville into northern Arkansas and then northeast towards Rollis. So again, this is where the worst of the problems are going to be tonight. So our forecast then, we're going to continue with the ice and the freezing rain and the sleet. Overnight temperatures, we've warmed a little bit from these numbers, and, but, and I think we'll continue to, but we're really not going to warm very much. I doubt we get to uh, freezing in most areas. Tomorrow, yeah, we'll get to 40, but the problem is by that time, the ice is going to be over. Hopefully, we'll be able to melt some of that off right now. We may have to scale these numbers back by a couple of degrees. As far as our seven-day forecast, really, there's not a lot of hope in there for Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. High temperatures are going to be stuck in the 20s. We may get back to 38 on Wednesday. The be a couple of days in there, Lisa and Ethan, where we have some snow flurries, but we're not looking at anything big, just flurries at this point. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> that's the little things. Yeah. Uh, up next, we try before you buy. It's time to get off your hands and knees and say hello to the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop. Finally, a it guarantees you get the floor spotless and without the back breaking effort. We take the Hurricane Spin Mop out for a spin ourselves, and we'll tell you what we think. We tried before you buy it, and we have received so many requests to test this one out. So tonight, we put Ethan, I mean the Hurricane Spin Mop, to the test. <laughs> now you can harness the power of the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop. Its thousands of thirsty microfiber fingers absorb practically anything and everything, so your floors are spotless each and every time. And the best part? Well, you've likely seen these commercials. They pledge to help you mop faster and easier with no drips, no streaks, and no mess because of the spinner to get the water out of the mop head. You can get them for 30 to 40 bucks or so. Question is, do they work? Good question. That's why we're here. I used it to mop my floors, which is, I got to tell you, something I don't do on a regular basis. Is that right? Uh -huh. so you make Sarah do that. Well, she does it for me. I don't make <laughs> oh, her. You're teaching the children. Yeah. So I was anticipating it to be a real pain. Fortunately, it wasn't. Let me tell you about my pluses and minuses. First, the pluses. It was easy to put together and to use. Also, and entertain the kids, uh, the spinner part worked great, I have to tell you. All you have to do is step on the pedal and as much water spun out as I wanted to spin uh -huh, out. I controlled yeah. it. It was nice. The other times I'd mop floors, I had to use my hands to wring out the mop. So this is much better. Sarah seemed to like it as well. As for the minuses, I honestly didn't notice a difference in results, to be honest. Uh, the floor You're didn't kidding. sparkle or shine more than any other time oh. I've ever mopped. So for me, it all comes down to ease of use. And yes, it was easy to use. You couldn't tell a difference? No. OK. I really don't have stock in the company, but I've got to tell you, I love this. My mom let me borrow her kitchen to try it. Okay, she begged me to use it in her kitchen. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> now here are the pluses. Easy to put together. And you know me, I don't usually read the directions. True. I love the microfiber mop head. I do mop floors a lot at okay. our house. And it absorbed the water really well. And like you said, you could spin it out as much as you want. Mm -hmm. Glide it across that wood floor. The spinner got rid of the water so that I wasn't wringing anything out. And I felt like I wasn't pushing dirt around on the floor. Have you felt like that before? because it came out clean, or it looked clean, and the water looked dirty. Minuses, minor compared to what I've used before. The mop head wasn't completely dry, so I didn't get that polished look it gets when you use a towel to dry off to finish the floor. But I really didn't see any streaks either. The only other thing I could think to complain about is it had no scratcher feature, so I had to go over a couple of spots several times. But my mom can't wait for me to come back and finish <laughs> mopping. <laughs> Try out another mop, yeah. Lisa. This is great. She said this was her favorite product. Well, you saw my wife sitting there. She yeah. seemed to enjoy it as yeah. well. So there you are. Uh, we would love to get your feedback on these items. If you've tried any of them, also, you can post and comment on our Facebook page. Let us know which As Seen on TV gadgets you'd like for us to try before you buy. We'll have another test for you next Wednesday. From zero to three, the latest on the surprise plan to move two NFL teams to L.A. Plus, Lady Bears on the road. MSU trying to continue their superb play of late with a game down in Carbondale. Sports with KY Breeze, Chad Fly starts now. Good evening, everybody. Finally, another reward for all of their hard work. This past week, the Bears picking up Valley win number four on the season. This weekend, Drake 
could be number five. Back in early January, Missouri State topped the Bulldogs by 25, but everyone very quick to point out that that was a different Bears team than now. We just keep on fighting. You know, that's, that's one thing about our team. We'll keep on fighting no matter what happened, no matter the ups, no matter the downs. And then we just take it one game at a time. Lady Bears looking for their third straight win tonight on the road to Carbondale. Great first half. Missouri State using a 10-0 run to take an early eight-point lead. Kenzie Williams, part of that run, she had a game-high 18 on the night. Meanwhile, a great finish to that half by freshman Liza Fruden. Here the layup. Liza with eight points in just two minutes. Lady Bears go on to take the game 73-57. They move into fourth place in the Valley. CFO hosting Haskell on the night, earning the split. Lady Bobcats improving to 20-7 and seven on the year. Both CFO regular seasons will wrap up tomorrow. Well, don't look now, Stan, but you got company trying to move an NFL team to Los Angeles. This is the concept for a brand new stadium which would be shared by the Raiders and Chargers. A $1.7 billion stadium that will become a reality if both of these teams are unable to secure their new stadiums in their current cities. Now, the Raiders and Chargers said that they will wait until the end of the upcoming season to announce either the move or plans that are working out for their current cities. Finally, money versus Manny. After five years of waiting, May 2nd, Las Vegas, the top ranked pound for pound boxer. Floyd Mayweather puts his 47-0 record on the line against the second-ranked boxer, Manny Pacquiao. Tickets for the event sold out in 15 minutes. The bout will gross $400 million. That's the highest ever, and it'll be on pay-per-view. You want to watch it in HD? It's going to cost you $100. Big night for local high schools. Girls swimming at state. All the updates can be found right now online at OzarkSportsZone.com. Also, state wrestling bracket breakdown is trending right now because that is wrapping up as we speak in Columbia. Rough night for the Ozarks. It took until the 12th round of matches for someone to punch their ticket into tomorrow's championships. And that was Monet's Jacob Negre at the 195-pound division. The Cubs will have five grapplers wrestling for a medal tomorrow. Good end of the night, though, is Willard's Hunter Yergin, Nix's Christian Lance, and Branson's Christian Robertson will all compete for a state championship tomorrow. Miller hosted Pierce City with the Spring River Valley Championship at stake. First half action winding down. Jordan Hill going to hit Jordan Butterfield for the three off the inbounds. Miller trails by one. They keep sharing the ball. This time it's going to be Isaac Hill dropping in two of his game high 20. Miller up by one. Second half, Colton Drollinger doesn't need to share. He just takes it to the rack himself. Pierce City has a two point lead with a minute to go. So here we go. Miller trying to tie or take the lead. Evan Bertho stepping in front of the pass. And how about the Eagles? Pierce City coming up with the championship, the final there of 63. 258. And the brand new Ozark Sports Zone show comes your way tonight at 11.30 live on the Ozark CW. We'll have an update from Columbia, updates from the state swimming, and of course, much more basketball. Some games were canceled, postponed tonight because of the ice. We'll have updates on those online at OzarkSportsZone.com. Rough week, rough week it for, for cancellations. A lot, of yeah. a lot of these conference titles for the small schools as their regular season wound down tonight. Yeah aren't decided because some schools weren't able to play, so they've got to make a decision, play this weekend or just go into the district tournament. Ah, interesting. Yes. Okay. We'll be right back. Okay. One last check of the weather before you start out on those roads. Just kidding. Don't do that, right? Yeah, stay at home. I mean, the road conditions are horrible out there tonight. Really ice-covered bridges are nasty. Lots of slide-offs and accidents tonight. It's only going to get worse. Here's the radar picture. You can see lots of uh, freezing rain. That area that's depicted is green up there around Fort Leonard Wood. Forget about it. They're in the upper 20s up there, so that is all freezing rain, too. Uh, here's the uh, time lapse the last uh, three to four hours, and you can see more is developing out to our southwest. Again, short term models keep the, at least the northeastern quarter of our viewing area under the freezing mark for the rest of the night, so conditions are just going to continue to worsen out there. Wouldn't be surprised if there are a few additional power outages, and again, we are going to be watching that very, very carefully through the course of the night. Again, it's all going to be because of ice. There may be some snow eventually on Sunday, but it's not going to be very much. And of course, road conditions are bad, and now that the winds are still picking up, it's quite breezy out there. It's going to blow those ice-laden limbs and power lines around. That will also cause a few power outages. Okay. All right. Very good. Thanks for joining us for KY3 News at 10. Tonight's show is next. Jimmy Fallon's guests include Kevin Bacon and Nick Jonas. Of course. We'll see you. Go ahead. All the latest tomorrow at 7 with Sarah and Felicia, plus on the KY3 News and Weather apps. See you tomorrow.